morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to worship today. It's a foggy morning, but God is here, and we are here to praise Him, and I'm um, hoping, trusting that by the end of the service, the fog will be lifted, and uh, just pretend you're on the mount, uh, top of Mount Tra uh, Transfiguration, okay? Really high on this mountain, and, 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 and you're, you're in the clouds, and, and God is very close to us. Well, we're going to begin our worship today knowing that God is close to us. And uh, let's stand and begin with our order for confession and absolution. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Lord, 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Merciful Father, your patience and loving kindness toward us have no end. Grant that by your Holy Spirit may, we may always think and do those things that are pleasing in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament lesson assigned for this, the 19th Sunday after the Trinity, comes to us from the book of Genesis, the second chapter, verse 18, and may be found on page 5 of your worship bulletin. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all livestock and to the birds of the heavens and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper fit for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. And then the man said, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife and they shall become one flesh and the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle that's assigned for this Sunday comes to us from the book of Hebrews, chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. And it may be found on page 6 of your worship bulletin. It is written, Therefore we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. For since the message declared by angels proved to be reliable and every transgression or disobedience received a just retribution, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? It was declared at first by the Lord and it was attested to us by those who heard while God also bore witness by signs and wonders and various miracles and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. Now it was not to angels that God subjected the world to come, of which we are speaking. It has been testified somewhere. What is man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man, that you care for him. You made him for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor, putting everything in subjection under his feet. Now, in putting everything in subjection to him, he left nothing outside his control. At present, we do not yet see everything in subjection to him, but we see him who for a little while was made lower than the angels, namely Jesus, crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. 
For it was fitting that he, for whom and by whom all things exist, in bringing many sons to glory, should make the founder of their salvation perfect through suffering. For he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one origin. That is why he is not ashamed to call them brothers, saying, I will tell of your name to my brethren in the midst of the congregation. I will sing your praise. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, Behold, I and the children God has given me. Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. For surely it is not angels that he helps, but he helps the offspring of Abraham. Therefore he had to be made like his brothers in every respect, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make propitiation for the sins of the people. For because he himself has suffered when tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. This ends the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand.
Well, let's see everybody. We'll, we'll wait until the young lady here joins us. Oh, the Lord be with you all today. It's great to be in your midst on behalf of the Lutheran Heritage Foundation. We also call it LHF by the five initials. And today I'm going to be preaching on the gospel. And uh, at this time, I just want to read to you once again the end of the gospel. And the people were bringing children to Jesus, but when that he might touch them, and the disciples, Jesus' key men, said, rebuke them. In other words, sent them away. But when Jesus saw that he was indignant, he was angry, and he said to them, let the children come to me and do not hinder them. Do not get in their way, for such belongs the kingdom of God. Well, boys and girls, a little bit about the Lutheran Heritage Foundation. We translate, publish, distribute, and introduce books in the languages of people all over the world and that includes boys and girls like you in foreign countries, and also right here in America, as more and more boys and girls with their families come, come here seeking freedom, and who knows, it could be that God is bringing them here just so they can hear about Jesus. More about that in the sermon. But uh, let's see, I need somebody who's a reader here. Who knows how to read? Yeah, you go. Well, you're right at my right hand. Would, would, would you open this book and read to me, please? Can you read the cover, by the way? You can't read the cover. Is that in English? No. Can you guess what language it might be? Have you seen that around before? I'm sorry? I can't hear you. I'm sorry, my hearing is on. Oh, she guessed Japanese. I'm sorry, that's not correct. Let me show this cover to, to you. Have you seen this kind of writing anywhere? No? Okay. How about this? Let's look at a, let's look at a picture. Oh, by the way, did, did you notice that this book opens the wrong way? Did you notice that? Instead of opening like this, it opens backwards. Because this book tells boys and girls the story of what? Oh, there's a picture of the flood. There's the ark, isn't it? There's the ark, and there's the, the rainbow after the flood. God's God's promise. But the writing we can't understand, can we? But I'll just bet that a boy or a girl like you over in the Middle East, maybe in Iraq or Iran or Egypt or Saudi Arabia especially, they would be able to read this because it's in Arabic their language. And sometimes maybe you should get out into Philadelphia someday and drive through some of the neighborhoods. You might see some signs on stores with that kind of writing. And this book we published just for boys and girls who speak Arabic. And the reason for that is so they can here and learn about Jesus. Jesus says, let the little children come to me and don't get in their way because boys and girls who read about Jesus and trust him for the forgiveness of sins, life and salvation, because they trust in Jesus. Well, that's what we should do as adults too, is to trust like the children do in Jesus who died on the cross, bleeding for our sins, shed in his blood, was buried, and rose from the grave. Now, this book was originally published in, in English many, many years ago, and I run into people all over the place 
who had one of these as a child in English, and now boys and girls from 30 some odd different languages can read the same book with the same pictures with the same good news that God loved them so much to send Jesus to live, suffer, and die for them and rise for them. As you go back to the, your seats, may God bless you and keep you and may your mom and dad and parents and family keep on bringing you to Jesus here in church so you can hear this good news too. In the name of Jesus, amen. You can go back to your seats. We continue with this.
grace, mercy, and peace we multiply them to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text this morning is the Gospel from Mark 10, and at this time we read these selected ver verses. Jesus is explaining the scriptures and God's will, and he says, but from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh, so they are no longer two, but one flesh. A little later, he says, let the children come to me, but do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. This is our text. Dear friends in Christ and fellow redeemed, what a great blessing to be with you, be with you today on behalf of the Lutheran Heritage Foundation. And I bring you greetings from our executive director, Reverend Dr. Matthew Heisey, as well as from our founder, Reverend Dr. Robert Ron, the staff at our headquarters in Macomb and from Field representatives like myself who are out across the fruited plain today, preaching Christ and telling some of what he is doing through LHF, the Lutheran Heritage Foundation, in the translating, publishing, distributing, and introducing Lutheran books that are Bible-based, Christ-centered, and Reformation driven. Well, more on that as we as we go along. Let's get to the text for today. Dear Christians, and you notice how I address you. Dear Christians, what has gone wrong with our society that marriages and families are crumbling, falling apart? Society, whole societies, not just here, but around the world, are redefining gender. What marriage is and what marriage is not. What family is and what family is not. What a child is and what a child is not. Or how is it that sex for many is recreation when God intended it for pleasure between husband and wife and for procreation. And how can society overlook the obvious consequences of the misuse of God's good gift of our sexuality? ST, STDs, AIDS, unwanted pregnancies, and all the while, Medical science is working over time to fix the problem, to fix the consequences, to make them not count. Well, the list could go on, but let's make note that of, of what happens when we, as Christians, rise up and object. Oh. The opposition throws the scriptures right back in our faces and says, judge not. Oh, man. And some of those are even Christian churches, so-called, that say, judge not. What's happening anyway? What is going on? And our text speaks to that this morning. Our text speaks of this, and even with a strange twist, that the place where Jesus speaks our text about gender, family, marriage, children, it takes place very near to the spot where John the Baptist confronted King Herod about his adultery and incest. And then was beheaded for that, like King Herod. Oh, the iron. Oh, so the Lord speaks of these evils both in his time and ours, both then and now. And as always, it's a matter of 
law and gospel. And as that law and gospel is, gospel is spoken, God always brings his Holy Spirit around and offers opportunity, opportunity to confess when stricken in the heart by the law, to repent and to be turned to Jesus, the Savior of all people, no matter how much trouble we've gotten ourselves in, no matter how bad our sin is, repenting of sin and error by faith, receiving Jesus' forgiveness, life and salvation, peace, comfort, and joy. Then and now, the very Son of God in the flesh stands with his family, stands with you, stands with his church. So this morning, let's see Jesus standing with us in our midst, helping us and helping the church. And let us see how the Lutheran Heritage Foundation helps families all over the world who are hungering and thirsting for the truth Jesus stands with them as well. As we uphold God's foundation of society, gender, marriage, family, children, and how we can stand in the midst of our seemingly crumbling society. You know, our text that Jesus speaks. This divorce thing he talks about is not something that is brand new. Turn the clock back 1400 years from the time when Jesus speaks our text to Moses in the desert, and Moses had a problem. And Jesus says, to the Pharisees who have come to trick him and trap him into speaking falsely of God and to teaching him properly so that they can accuse him of blasphemy and get rid of him. 1400 years earlier, husbands were looking for excuses to get rid of their wives. Excuses that were, oh, I don't like the looks of her. She burned my dinner. Things that, that just seem so inane. And notice what Jesus says, it's for the hardness of your hearts that Moses per it permitted a certificate of divorce. But that's not the way it was from the beginning of time when God created man and woman. Hardness of hearts, being unloving, unforgiving, chasing after other women, it's not a new problem in society. It's ages old. We can see God in his mercy as he designed creation. God had a foundational plan for a society. Not just at the beginning, not just at the time of Moses, not just the time of our text. But also for our times and in our days as well. The foundation that is founded upon his eternal forever truth of his good and gracious will. And if we go back to Adam and Eve, ever since that fall in the garden, ever since their first disobedience, humankind has been in rebellion of God. It's no mystery as to why today's gospel has been paired with the Old Testament reading from Genesis 2 We'll back up just a, just a chapter to Genesis 1, 
God is rock solid, very firm. He created the male and female. That's it, two genders. Male and female, he created them both. First Adam and then Eve. And then in our text, our Old Testament text, the very words repeated by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in today's gospel. The father leaves his mother and the woman leaves her home and they become one flesh, literally from the original languages, glued together as one. As one. That's God's wisdom at work. Do we think we know better than God? Oh, you go right up the line from us personally, right up the line through all the, all the legislators in our country to presidents, kings, queens all over the world, 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 world rulers. But you see, if we go back to what God has originally said, established, promised, we're at the foundation. And that, because we believe that foundation by the power of the Holy Spirit, we believe that what God ordains is always best. That's what gives us confidence for daily living. That's what reminds us, my Savior into whom I was baptized and who is a part of me from the time the Word and water in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit splashed upon me and I was incorporated into Christ. Jesus stands with me. Thick and thin, even in the midst of my failures. His forgiveness is limitless. That doesn't mean we trifle with it or say, Yeah, I know Jesus won't oh, forgive me if I go and do X, Y, Z. Oh, to live in a fallen world that needs Jesus. A fallen world that has been devastated by broken relationships, by betrayal, broken by hardness of hearts, grudges, unforgiving, deliberate disobedience to what we know is written in our hearts because God has written it in the heart of every single human being, those Ten Commandments. Oh my God, grant to us here gathered to all people around the world. May he grant us repentance, a change of mind, turn us from sin and self to the mercies of his dear son, to his loving arms stretched out upon the tree of the cross, to which the nails were placed, his side pierced, his feet pierced as he bled to death in your place and mine, as the writer to the Hebrews says, and 1 John 2 says, as the propitiation, the covering, the blood that went on the altar in the heavenly holy of holies for the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation that God only now sees the blood of Jesus cover. This is the Jesus that stands with our families, that stands with you and I. Listen to what the writer of the Hebrews said in our epistle reading for, for today. Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself, that is Jesus, the Son of God, likewise partook of the same things, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. Think about the incarnation. Oh, not just an advent and at Christmas time, not all limited to death. Think of, think of Jesus as being one of you and I the sinless one who is with you and in you, who has redeemed you, is with you every moment of every day. 
It stands with your family as well. Friends, you should know that the attacks on these foundational principles of gender, family, and children, they're happening worldwide. I recall several years ago uh, being, being invited to a meeting where a couple of missionaries from Kenya, from Kenya, had come here to this country to remind us to stand firm on the word because that's what individuals and families need, to stand firm in that word. These attacks are from Satan and they are going on all around the world, not just in our country. But God has given his church the word to proclaim this good news of his love for us. And I can tell you that people around the world are hungry, thirsty, yearning, eager to find and discover and learn and hear the truths, truths that they can lay hold on and trust and can stake their lives on. Because much of the world is hopeless, not hope-filled like you here at Hope Lutheran Church. Hopelessness. Back in 1992, LHS founder, Reverend Dr. Robert Ron, made a pilgrimage to St. Petersburg, Russia and Riga, Latvia. This is three years after the fall of the Berlin Wall and the Soviet Union was breaking up and the church was crawling out from under 100 years, a whole century of persecution where Satan used communism to try to eradicate the church. But you and I know that's not possible because Jesus himself says, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Dr. Brown found that there were, there was a remnant. Most of the churches had been empty, destroyed. One was even turned into a swimming pool, the high diamond platform. There were few, if any, Bibles, fewer hymnals, there were a few pastors, and the Lord moved Dr. Ryan to start the Lutheran Heritage Foundation. He raised the money and did the Luther thing. Put God's word into the language of the people, the language that is in their heart that they can understand. And then from there, it was the catechism in Latvia, in Russia, and then the hymnal. And on and on and on we go until Today, nearly 30 years later, LHF has published over 3 million books. And today, books are in 125 different languages are spread across some 1,187 titles. The book list out on the display table on the left-hand side. It lists every single one of those titles organized by language with subtitles for those of us who don't know where all these languages are spoken. But one of the greatest blessings over these last three years has been putting Luther's small catechism, either in its shirt pocket form that you may remember from confirmation class, in Sunday school, or the small catechism, or the large catechism, into over 100 different languages. Oh, please, don't go out the door after church today. Come down to Mrs. Poles's classroom for the presentation. It'll only take 40 minutes or so, 
And I'll take you around the world and around the corner from where you all live. I'll take you around the world, around the corner, to see for yourself and hear how God's word is raining down and how families are finding treasure, God's word. God's word explained. God's truth proclaimed in the midst of the witch doctors, in the midst of the fanatical Islamists who threaten their lives, in the midst of the prosperity preachers who promise health and wealth and don't deliver. <coughs> because they're in the midst of all of that of the Lutherans with the small catechism that proclaims and explains God's word to them in its purity, clarity, and truth. And the Holy Spirit creates faith that grabs their hearts, pulls them away from the Islamists, from the witch doctors, from the prosperity preacher, preachers, to gather around Christ with the missionary in hearing the great blessing of the truth. including children. That book, this book that I held up during the, that we used during the children's message, Child's Garden of Bible Stories, has been published in English since 1948. Who knows how many tens or hundreds of thousands of, of uh, copies in English are made. But now it's available in over 30 languages for children all over, over the world that they can know Jesus as their Lord and as their Savior. Picture books are particularly appealing even for low literacy adults. What a wonderful accidental discovery that missionary, missionaries made. Because the book, these books are written in third grade language or so. Even adults that aren't really all that literate in foreign countries are being brought to faith. On the display table, right smack in the middle at the front, is a graphic novel called The Bible Story in Pictures. It's just a, it's on the printing presses now in Bangkok, Thailand, being printed in the Lisu language, L-I-S-U, language that is spoken to people in the hill country between Thailand and Myanmar, also known as Burma, and in South China. People that are hungering and thirsting in three congregations in the Pittsburgh area that I was with last Sunday gathered together so we could dedicate that book because they got together and sponsored the printing of that book. So the boys and girls and adults in kind of a quasi-comic book, although it's a classic, And read and know Jesus as they see him. And so they can be rooted and grounded in him and established in the faith as they're being taught, abounding in thanksgiving for the blessings that God gives them as they walk in his ways and to his glory. Now well, the attacks are going to continue. Right up until the end of time. God has promised that. Satan wants to tear you and I and all people away from Christ and keep us as his own. But the Lord of the church, Jesus Christ, stands with his family, the church. You may remember from Ephesians chapter 5, where Christ is, is called the bridegroom of his bride, the church. That's you and I. That he is redeemed with his blood and is washed clean by the word and water of holy baptism. And also strengthens us with the very body and blood of not a dead man, but of the living Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, 
or as Luther teaches in the Catechism, where there is the forgiveness of sins, there is also life, that's eternal life, and salvation, and that's what gives you and I and all who believe the hope of which this congregation speaks. I hope Lutheran Church doesn't speak in sentimental worldly things, but rather of the eternal hope God has won for you and me and all people that we broadcast to Levittown and beyond to the ends of the world this good news of the Savior who loved us, gave himself for us, rose for us, and will one day come again to remove us from this earthly veil of tears to himself in heaven. And that's worth waiting, hoping, and trusting in. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds in and through Christ Jesus today and always. Amen. A postscript. I'm glad I moved the last page of my manuscript because I almost neglected to tell you about the bulletin insert in your bulletin today. There'll be a door offering at the conclusion of the service, and this brochure has a uh, handy dandy fold down, tear out envelope that you could use for the door offering today if you'd like, or take it home, prayerfully consider writing a check and sending it. Because almost every one of those books that you see on the table up there in the display and that will pass around during the presentation only cost five dollars. Come and see the quality of books. Five bucks. Wow, that's an incredible thing. Thank you for the opportunity and may God bless you. Amen. Ask. Let us rise. We continue with our prayers. Lord God, you help us by your spirit to receive your kingdom in humble repentance, like little children, that we may enter it in the joy of your presence. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, that we may pay closer attention to your word lest we drift away from it and neglect the great salvation it reveals to us in Christ. Bless the ministry of the Lutheran Heritage Foundation that your word may touch the lives of many more people and bring them to salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, in a reflection of your eternal love, you join man and woman together so that they are no longer two, but one flesh. Bless the engaged, the newly married, and those who have shared many lives together, that they may live in holiness, practice forgiveness, and be a sign of your love to generations that follow. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, help all parents who have brought their children to the waters of holy baptism to continue in faith and bring their children to your house of worship, that you may continue to take them in your arms and bless them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, help us when we see so much in this world that is not in sync with your will. Give us eyes of faith to see your presence as the help and hope for this generation. Remind us that nothing is beyond your control Give us opportunities to witness to our hope in you and spirit-led courage to speak to those who need you. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, guide and guard our governing authorities, our president, Congress, and all in civil authority. Protect those in the military and in our communities who protect, teach, and serve us. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, God, comfort those who in need are of your healing touch, we lift up before you Jonas and Haley, Ken and Charlie. We pray for Tim and Sandy and Mason, for Kimberly and Tom and Bill and Pat, for Doug and Robert and John and Susan, and for Steve and Ed. Give them your 
words, a healing touch, we ask, Lord, in your mercy. Lord, God, bless all who come to eat and drink Christ's body and blood today, that they may not doubt, but believe that you are present, and you give forgiveness of sins, strength, and faith. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.
congregation is invited to come receive the sacrament of Holy Communion. We ask uh, our musicians to come first and then uh, uh, this side and then this side. Please enter by the center aisle and return by the sides.
says, The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Thank you. That's right. And quickly. 